Hello, I'm Jill. And I'm Jenna. Welcome to ASL Stew. Okay, so this is kind of a new thing that we're trying out. I don't know if you remember, but before we had Deaf History Month. And since then, some people have wanted some other type of videos like that. So I thought, why don't we start a Deaf History series? So we'll be doing this every once in a while. We'll give kind of a short video talking about an important event uh, in history related to Deaf people in general. Um, it's not going to be too long of a video, just something short. And then we will put some links and resources down below. That way you can read and learn more about it. Okay. So the first video in the Deaf History series will be related to DPN. What does DPN mean? Deaf President Now. So that happened at Gallaudet University back in 1988. Really, it started March 6th, 1988. And the reason that this happened is because around that time, Gallaudet University was deciding on who its next president was going to be. So the Board of Trustees had decided and picked from three different candidates. The first one was hearing and the other two were deaf. So they decided to pick the one hearing candidate and her name was Elizabeth Zinzer. So she was the one chosen to be Gallaudet's seventh president. After that, people were not exactly happy. Gallaudet University was established in the 1800s, so meaning by 1988, they'd been established for well over 100 years. And in that time, they never had a deaf president. They've always had hearing presidents. So they felt it was time. They were ready to have a deaf president. And, like she said, two of the final candidates were deaf. They had PhDs. They were well qualified for the position, but still... A hearing candidate was chosen probably because it just kept in with what they've had all this time. You know, faculty, staff, even the community in general were outraged by it. They said, no, that's not what we want. So they decided to get together and start a well-organized protest. So as she mentioned, they started a protest, a well-organized protest. And there were four main student leaders, and their names were Brigetta, Born, Jerry Covell, Greg Hillbach, uh, he's one of the most famous that I've heard of before, and Tim Raris. So these were all student leaders. Now, were there other people obviously involved as well? For example, at that time, the president of NAD, Gary Olson, he decided to get involved and he encouraged people to go ahead and march and protest to where the board of trustees had their meeting and where they pitched their candidate. So he said protest there. So he got everybody to go and march and protest. Now, during the meeting, some people say it's not 100% proven, but some people say apparently... The one of the board of trustees, a woman named Spillman, actually made a comment saying deaf people can't function in a hearing world. It's impossible. Now, she says that she did not say that, but many of the protesters said, yes, she did say that. So there's not proof, but it seems it's a strong possibility. So that made everybody feel like that the board of trustees didn't understand, you know, deaf community, deaf culture and what deaf people can do. They seemed out of touch. And that's just not a good fit. And actually, if you didn't know, it wasn't only deaf people who were protesting. The local African American community recognized this protest and saw the march. So what they did is they loaned a banner that they had from the Civil Rights Movement that said, I have a dream. So that's representing Martin Luther King. So they loaned that to the protesters and the protesters were very thankful just to show solidarity between the two groups. So they went ahead and used the banner during that protest, and it was a very powerful message. So the protesters had four demands that they wanted, and those four demands were Elizabeth Zinzer must resign 
and they must pick a deaf president. The second was that Spillman must resign. She was the chairperson of the Board of Trustees, so she has to resign. The third one is that within the Board of Trustees, there must be a 51% majority of deaf people compared to hearing. And any student or any faculty staff at Gallaudet University who is protesting would not have any punishment or reprisal. If all four of those demands were met, then the protest would stop. Now, the protest by day four had become such a media frenzy that they had the famous actress, Marley Matlin, she actually was interviewed on TV concerning what was going on at the protest, which put a lot of pressure on the board of trustees. And then one of the board of trustees, I. King Jordan, who was deaf, he announced finally he did not support the board of trustees and he supported the protest. Later that night, Zinzer decided to resign. So... By the end of the week, all of the demands, all four demands, had been met. And then they picked the new president, who was I. King Jordan. So he became the first deaf president of Gallaudet. So that event was so crucial to American deaf history. It really showed how deaf people can march in solidarity and have a deaf president, someone who can lead. That was unheard of before. It was amazing. It was really powerful, a big impact, showing that deaf people can do things. We can, we can protest, we can have power, we can do this. So looking back, that just shows us now, we have the ability to set up a well-organized protest, and it was really inspirational and empowering to the deaf community. It's amazing. Yeah, and remember, this video is just a small explanation of what DPN was. If you want to know more, there's a lot more details that you can read, and you can read why this protest was much more successful than other protests. So we'll have all of that information from Gallaudet's website about DPN, which is where we got a lot of our information from, and I will link that down below. Plus, if there's any other links, um, we can put those down and read those and learn from them. Learn about deaf history more and more, and then share it with other people and show that death can. If you guys have enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the Deaf History series, click like and remember to subscribe to see more videos in this series. Also, let us know what type of different videos you want to see about Deaf History. Uh, I'm just curious. Let us know down below and leave a comment. If you want to show support in any other way, you can look at our Patreon page. There's some really cool perks on there if you want to provide monthly support. Or we have a link that you can leave a small tip, whatever amount you want there. And we have a few different ways, so take a look. We really appreciate any support you've given us. Thank you. Thanks. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.